Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fancy Functioning Farms. It's been a little while, but this is a series where we create not necessarily the most efficient of farms, but some of the most fancy for your Minecraft worlds. Today I've got something really, really cool for you to show. I've got a nearly invisible pumpkin farm, and uh, I'm very proud of this. It may lo not look like much on the surface, but if we go down below, you can see it's quite complicated, and we'll be getting to that a little bit. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. So one of the things I want to explain here is that there are five different blocks that pumpkins can grow on. They can grow, uh, and they're shown here. They can grow on farmland. They can grow on podzel. They can grow on grass, which is what we'll be using today. They can grow on coarse dirt. And finally, they can grow on dirt, as you saw right there. So those are the five blocks. But because this farm has only one block of interface between the redstone and the farm, we need a way to detect when the pumpkin grows without having an observer up above on the surface. So here's how we do that. We take a grass block here, and when a pumpkin grows, we can detect that the we when a pumpkin grows, we can we can detect when the grass block turns into a dirt block. And then push the pumpkin up through a piston to break it. So here's a little bit about how we actually detect that, because it's a little more complicated than you might think. So obviously, a piece of redstone going into a piston like so will power it. And a piston that isn't having redstone pointing into it will not be powered. But here's the thing. When redstone, we can move how this redstone block is powered. You can see. Right now, it's in the line, which will power the piston, and with this target block here, it's not. So what we can do is power the piston, and then redirect the current, and this looks like it shouldn't be powering the piston. And as a matter of fact, this piston isn't being powered. But in the way we set this up, the piston doesn't actually realize. So if we were to give the piston an update by, say, placing a block on top, the piston would retract, like so. So what we can do is actually the reverse of that, where we power this first, power that, and then remove this, and it looks like the piston is supposed to be powered, but it's actually not updating. And as soon as something happens on top, the piston will extend. So what we can do here is take a grass block, like we said before, and when a pumpkin grows on top, it will detect that and extend. And then you'll notice we have a pumpkin entity right here, little item. And so in order to collect the items, we have entities, hopper minecarts, that are able to pick up any blocks that fall right there. So that's basically how the farm works. Um, it's an overview of some of the basic mechanics, but it's still a little tricky to get it all into the ground and hidden. So let's get to building it now. So the entire footprint of this farm, which has six farm blocks for either melons or pumpkins, is six blocks wide by 11 blocks, and it is also five blocks deep. As a total height, it's actually six blocks, but one of those blocks is above the ground layer. So we'll dig that out here. All right, there we go. And now let's get to the materials you need to build this. You'll need quite a few materials for this one. It's a bit of a larger farm, but that's okay, because it works quite nicely. You'll need 10 leaves six of either melon or pumpkin seeds. I'm going to use every other here. Six dirt blocks for your 
to, to plant on your melon and pumpkin seeds. You'll need an infinite water source, some stairs of any kind. I choose warped because they're green and they're new. Um, light of any kind, you'll need sea. So this could include sea lanterns, glowstone, the stream lights I have here, or you could even go beacons if you really want to be fancy. But they're hard to see, so I wouldn't recommend that. You also need a barrel, 12 actual grass blocks, so you will need to have a silk touch shovel here. And then you have 40, which I would recommend as grass, but you can, if need be, use other ground cover. But it will hurt the efficiency just a little bit, and I haven't tested to the fullest extent of how far you can use non-grass materials, because grass has to spread back onto our farm. You'll also need three dispensers, five levers, a block of redstone, 12 sticky pistons, an observer, seven hoppers, 18 redstone dust, two redstone torches, five target blocks, four slime or honey blocks, so this could be either, a redstone comparator, seven redstone repeaters, 33 solid blocks of any kind. I'm going to use green wool here because, I don't know, that it's green and it looks cool. And I'm, you're also going to need seven immovable blocks. I'm also going to use green glazed terracotta, but you could use things like obsidian, basically any block that can't be moved, but also can place redstone, so it couldn't be like a chest or something like that. You're also going to need eight minecart hoppers, and in addition to that, you're going to need a fence block, some rails, probably powered, but you can do with unpowered, and a chest. But these are all going to be temporary items, and you're going to get them back once the build is done. They're just for uh, help placing the minecarts in. You're also probably going to need some tools here, so you'll definitely need a hoe. A pickaxe is recommended as you have to dig out some of the area and you'll be dealing with pistons and things, and a shovel. And like I said before, this is probably going to need some silk touch so you need because you need to deal with grass. Also, you'll want you'll probably want some kind of scaffolding and but you'll probably get something like this as you dig the area out. In addition, there is an optional extra storage module that requires these materials. Redstone lamp, green carpet, two green wool, a redstone dust, another comparator, a slab of any kind, a redstone torch, a hopper, and then you'll lead it into extra storage, which could be a barrel or a whole large silo system. That is up to you, but it just leaves, but it just is uh, easy to access right at the bottom of the farm there. I have these torches here because there are kind of two things that you can do with the farm. You can leave the area entirely mined out and simply build up the redstone and then leave it empty. Or, and then you would probably want to spawn proof it by leaving torches in. However, you could also try and fill in the area and then you wouldn't have to deal with that. That's why these torches are here, but you would need probably 10 or so to make sure everything's lit up well. So let's get into building it. So, I've mined out a little staircase and got ourselves a little infinite water source here, and we're ready to start get building. So, I've marked out here in iron blocks one of the most important part measurements of the farm here. It is two blocks from the back and one block off from the side here, and these are the six blocks, or this is directly below, where the six blocks of farmland are going to go. And that's important so for measuring purposes. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to come just over here, which is two blocks after this section, and build up with some fake scaffolding here, and build up to the point right three blocks below here, and then place three dispensers facing up, and this will bring you right with ground level here. Next, you want to take some hoppers and at the bottommost dispenser, place a hopper going into that, and then continue this all the way down. 
and you'll end up right here perfectly in line with this right here. So two blocks from the back wall, two blocks from this wall. All right, so next you want to come to right here, right where this last iron block is here, and place some pistons facing you. And you'll place six of them, like so. And these are going to be removed in just a bit, but we're going to use them to help put in place our next pistons, which are going to be facing upwards on the end right here, like that. So now we're going to place a temporary block right there, and this is where we're going to start putting in the minecarts. And this is a little bit of a tricky process because they need to be hanging a little bit off the end here so that they don't get pushed up when these pistons, pistons extend. Pistons. <laughs> so what we're going to want to do is place a fence block here and then right there place a chest. Then we're going to want to place down some rails right here and grab our first minecart and push that in as far as we can. And then we'll break this and make sure that this minecart is also pushed off to the side. You can actually press F3 and B to check the hitboxes. And you want to see that this is up against the fence right there and up against the chest right there. And that's perfect. So this is exactly how we want it to be. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to power this piston right here and push these two sticky pistons into here. And we want to make sure that that space is open so that this fence has room to move over there. And we'll do the same thing for this piston. So great. So now we have it, the hopper minecart perfectly in place and we can remove this and the chest as well. Now you want to be careful not to bump this uh, minecart now, because it is possible to still bump, because you can see the hitbox is pointing out. So you want to be a little careful of that. And so next we're going to want to do just the exact same thing here. Place our fence, place some scaffolding, place the chest, and get some powered rails here. Place our minecart with hopper. And once we have that done, we can power our pistons. And rinse and repeat. This time, you can place the fence over here. And in order to get the rail where you want it to, because it won't always be right here, which is ideal. Um, but if you need to, you can place a, just another rail right there. Place your minecart with hopper. And then just break these two. And with that, you can push your minecart in place. And there you go. Perfect. So let's push these last two pistons over. And that was just a visual glitch right there. My minecart's still right where it needs to be. And then we can break these last two. So next, you can go ahead and break all these pistons here. And what you're going to want to do is place grass blocks on top of the pistons and then right here as well. So this will be right in the middle. There's two blocks of air here and there's two blocks of air on the other side. And you want to go ahead and place these all the way down.
Now you'll want to make sure that you have this space open temporarily. So we'll mine these real quick again. And then we'll just place rails all along the top here. And we're going to grab a scaffolding block and put that on each end, like so, and like so. Now we're going to place five hopper minecarts here, and uh, there is six blocks, but the hopper minecart is just a little bit bigger than a regular block. So if you go ahead and place five here, you'll see after they jostle around a little bit, you can run through them like this to make sure they get in the right place. You'll see that they get all nicely organized like so. If you were to place six, they would be jostling into each other, you'd hear this terrible noise, and uh, they would push themselves out once the pistons extend here. So that's not what we want. We want to make sure that there's only five and that it's they're just together nicely like that. So next you want to come right here and place a block right here, your solid block of your choice, and go every other right there. And then we're going to place actually on the piston this time right here, here, and here. And then what we're going to want to do is place pistons right here. Oopsies. And these, again, are temporary, so that you can push blocks into where the minecarts are. And uh, this is a very important thing. You need to make sure that you have your blocks up here. Otherwise, they, these blocks will just uh, push these minecarts up, and you'll have to do it all over again. And it's kind of a pain. So make sure that you have your blocks right there before you do this next step. So you have these pistons set up right here, and you can power them. Go ahead and uh, put the blocks where they need to be like so, and then you can break these pistons. And then finally, what you want to do is you want to place some temporary blocks right there and place the last six grass blocks right there, and then go ahead and break the rails. And you want to be very careful not to break the pistons, because that would be, that would cause headaches. So you'd have to restart all the way over again. So you want to make sure that every rail right there has been broken. You can double check by just checking in here. So we got all six, perfect. And you can go ahead and place the rest of the floor here. And like we said before, we wanted to make sure that we recommend that this is all grass, but uh, if you need it to be something else, that's you can do that. So first I want to make sure I want to point out that you want to put your dirt blocks right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where your plants are gonna go, remember, because we got the iron blocks down there. And the rest is gonna be grass here. So let me get to that. And once you have the everything filled in, it'll look like this. You want to make sure that these blocks actually are uh, leave as a gap because we're going to be placing some light sources and water sources. We'll do that right now. So what you want to do is you want to place your stair right here and then just go every other from that and then you want to take your light, whatever that may be, and go fill in the rest. And you got that. And you can go ahead and waterlog these stairs right away. And then you can go ahead and hoe these blocks right here. And go ahead and plant your seeds. And we will let these grow for a bit, but uh, we'll come back and once we're done with the rest of the build, they should be somewhat close to grown. But just to finish things off, we'll place our leaves right around here so that the pumpkins and melons can't grow anywhere except where we want them to. Now would be a good time to place a barrel right there, and you can go ahead and place a lever 
right here. So this is actually the top of the farm done. You can see it looks pretty similar. There's this row of blocks, which will get uh, sucked back down by the pistons once we power those. But uh, now it's time to work on some of the redstone beneath. So I'm just going to place down some torches here in the corner so that it stays light for all of you following the tutorial here. And uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take an observer here and one of our some of our sticky pistons and go over to this end of the farm here. We're going to place the observer so that it is looking at this row of pistons here. Well, technically only this block, but uh, for the purposes of this farm, it's looking at the entire row. And uh, then we're going to take a sticky piston right here, facing that way, and put a redstone block on its surface right there. And we're actually going to place it right out here so that it can grab it back and uh, do that. Next, we're going to want to take our solid blocks here and go one below right there, and then dip down and go all the way across. And you're going to end right at this piston here. So what you want to do next is take some redstone and place it down three like that. It'll be powered by this redstone block here. Go ahead and place a repeater right there. What you're going to want to do next is place some blocks here and here. And then on the end here, here, and here. Go ahead and place some redstone repeaters like so. You want to make sure they're all facing outwards, and then go ahead and run your redstone line down here, and that'll power all of the repeaters here. So next, you want to place a piston here, and this is the one thing you'll need to make sure that these two blocks are either air blocks or uh, non-sticky or immovable blocks or some kind that uh, will not inter interfere with the slime block, because this piston needs to be able to go up and down and not try and take the whole world with it. So you go ahead and place slime block on top and a target block like that. Uh, just remember that these two need to be open. Same with this one right over here. Here and here. So like I said, we're just placing a target block, slime block, and having your extended piston right here. And now you should have something that looks like this. Next, what you want to do is you want to place some some of your glazed terracotta here, 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 and go around to the other end. Here, here, and right here. So this will all be right next to diagonal from these solid blocks we placed earlier. Go ahead and then place some redstone dust on top of all of that terracotta you just placed. And now we're going to take some solid blocks, place a block right here, and a lever. Go ahead and turn that on. And go ahead and place a block right here, and a lever, and turn that one on. Head around to the other side here. Go ahead and place your lever here, turn that on, and lever here, and turn that on. Next, we want to come back over to this redstone block here, and we're going to break it temporarily here. Go ahead and place your piston right facing upward here, your last piston, and a solid block here and here. You can go ahead and place this redstone block back there. Grab a repeater, go ahead and point that facing right there, and make sure that is set to three ticks right there. Take your last uh, glazed terracotta, go ahead and place it right here place a redstone torch and a solid block right there, and you'll hear all the pistons fire. And if we go up top here, oopsies, if we go up top here, you'll see that all of the grass blocks has been extended and retracted, and now it's flush with the floor like it should be, which is exactly what you want to see. If, some, if you don't see that, then there's an issue. So, we're basically done with the farm right about here. We just need to get this item system sorted, and uh, we're going to do that right now. So go ahead and place a temporary block, and then one of your solid blocks right there. Continue, oopsies. 
Make sure you don't break your slime blocks, because they are pretty easy to break. <laughs> so you want to continue, you got your block right here, place another block right there, and a block right here, just one up. Then we're going to head around and place a little bit of scaffolding so we can get in here. Place three blocks right here, and you want to grab your target block and place it right here. Go ahead and place your torch on top. You hit your click, that's good. Take your comparator output right here from this dispenser, and a repeater right there so this signal is enhanced. You can take your three redstone dust, and this is a nice little dropper system that'll take any item in here and put it all the way up to the top. And this is one of the nice things with the new target block that I designed. Now I'm just going to place my last two blocks here and here, and hey, it looks like we already got a pumpkin growing, which is great. Now, like we mentioned at the start, there is an optional system that I'm going to show you how to build right here, which allows you to get more space than just this barrel, because as of right now, once this barrel fills up, it'll start to back up the system, and that's not what you usually want. So what we're going to do is we're going to mine out this block right here, place a redstone lamp and a carpet right there. Going to mine out this block here, and we're going to be taking some output from this middle dis dropper right here. Let's go ahead and take a slab right there and a redstone comparator. Go into another block, and that'll power this right here. And move over here. Now we want to take a block down here, take a redstone dust, and take your torch, place that right there, and you can then place a hopper right here down into whatever storage. And this barrel right here just represents a large scale storage system. Wherever this, uh, you can put more hoppers down here or do whatever, put it out into cactus if you want, but uh, this will go out into a large scale storage system. So we're gonna place these last two blocks back like that. And uh, there you go. So now if we head up to the top here, you see a melon has already grown, but uh, this light will turn on and you'll be able to see kind of an illumination um, if this is full and it has backed up into the second dropper right here. So if you do empty this chest or this barrel here, it uh, isn't going to actually reset the system. You'll have to take stuff out of this dropper in order for it to not go down into deep storage, but uh, that'll be a while. Uh, a barrel is usually sufficient enough for uh, the system for a long time. I've had it running on my I've had this farm running on my server for a little while, and I haven't filled this barrel up yet. So uh, you should be fine with just one barrel, but uh, I just thought I'd add that as an extension in case you want to leave this for long, long hours. And as you can see, the farm just fired. The uh, melon right here was just harvested as it turned to dirt. And if you see right here, we've got our melon slices. Ooh, that was a lucky one. We got seven. So there you go, guys. That is the entire farm done. You can get rid of your infinite water source here, fill in any staircases you made, and uh, that should be everything. And there we go. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and goodbye!